I've been documenting my adventures with a GoPro for the last seven years. I started out taking some pretty crappy photos, but along the way, I've improved and found a skill set that I'm really proud of. Oftentimes, I choose to use a GoPro over my more expensive and technically better cameras because it's always on me. It never feels too intrusive and fundamentally, I can focus on the moment where I believe every great photo comes from. At the very top of this list is the selfie. Now I wanted to start with this because it's a photo that we all love to take. Who doesn't like taking a selfie? And there's a number of ways that I think you can really easily improve this shot. The first of which is experimenting with the proximity you are away from the camera. Now, one of the reasons why I gravitate towards taking GoPro or action camera selfies opposed to using a smartphone is because of the wide angle lens. I don't have the latest smartphone, so I don't have that ability. And I just think the general color science of an action camera looks better than my smartphone. So something that I really like to experiment with and my preferred proximity or length of selfie stick is the shortest is actually just holding the camera. I really feel like when I take a GoPro selfie and you know, I look back at those memories of me almost just with the GoPro shorty selfie stick or holding the camera, it's like my my hand is extended out into the image and I really feel like I can I'm there. I'm back in that moment remembering what it was like to climb that mountain, to get to the top of that peak, you know, or just to experience that place with the person who I was with. Quite simply, some simple tips to improve your GoPro selfies are to think about your lighting conditions, either having the sun side lit, never having the sun behind you backlighting doesn't really make these photos look good, but either having the sun on the side or in front of you and always shooting outdoors. My preferred way of capturing a GoPro selfie is to use burst mode. I like to capture 10 raw photos over three seconds and pick my favorite out of those images. Yes, I always love to color and edit the photo afterwards in Lightroom, hence why I use raw. And if you're interested in learning how to color grade or color your images um, in Lightroom Mobile or on desktop, you can click up here in the cards. Next up is the landscape photo, and I think this is something often overlooked with action cameras. Now, action cameras have come a long way, and if you're using the latest version, you can really get a lot of pixels in that small frame. Now, here's a couple of photos that we recently took in the Pyrenees on one of our latest trips, and I just think to improve this shot and ways that I really love using this is really capturing the immersiveness of a landscape, but also setting this camera up and putting a person or putting yourself in the frame is one way to quite simply make that photo a little bit more relatable. Always having scale in an image is the perfect way to showcase just how bold, vast and wide that destination is. Lastly, the way I like to shoot landscape photos with GoPro is on a tripod and often using time-lapse photo mode. Now I like to use time-lapse photo mode over burst because I can take photos on an interval and then select my favorite photo from that amount of time that I was playing around in the frame after the fact. Now you might also like to experiment with using the countdown timer. Countdown timer where you can set it up to 10 seconds if you have less memory card space, but using um, a tripod and framing up the shot whilst putting yourself in is the perfect way to capture a GoPro landscape shot. Next up is one of my all time favorite travel shots and that is the over under or the dome. It's probably been coined the dome shot, but it's quite simply using a affordable accessory which is a big dome which sits in front of the lens. Yes, you can actually create this shot without having a dome, but it is extremely difficult to achieve. I'm sure anyone that has experimented and tried to do this will know of the difficulty. So just having buying one of these 50 to 100 US dollar accessories is how you're able to capture this shot. Now, some advice that I've got um, and some of the most frequently asked questions that I get about creating these photos is how to remove the water droplets over the lens. And that quite simply just comes down to dunking the dome into the water before you take the shot. Other things to keep in mind um, are, are light, as that's like critical to making the best dome content. Uh, this photo that we recently took, we shot uh, just after sunrise, so it was probably like maybe 9, 10 a.m. I think the light was really nice. It was behind the camera and we were just conscious of where that shadow fell into the shot. So thinking about the water conditions as well, the calmer, the better. So if you're in, you know, 
really rapid water, condi water conditions, you're not going to be able to control the environment as best as you can. Uh, dome photos I absolutely love taking. There will be links in the description uh, to specific domes that I've used, both the G-Dome and the Teleson Dome. I recommend both of these if you are interested in grabbing a dome and experimenting with this on your upcoming vacation. <laughs> Before we jump into the next tip, I wanted to direct you to an amazing online learning platform and the sponsor of today's video, which is Skillshare. For those of you that have never heard of Skillshare, I highly recommend it. It is an online learning platform with thousands of inspiring classes and courses for curious people and creatives. It's an opportunity to explore your existing curiosities and learn new skills. And a course which I've recently taken was by Nathaniel Drew, something that I watched actually just before making this video and I think pairs well with you know, preserving memories is about his course called Documenting Your Life. One thing I found really empowering from watching this course is his idea of how documentation as opposed to creativity is a way to remove the judgment from our work. So if you've ever been wanting to start that project, if you've ever been thinking about, you know, becoming or starting a YouTube channel, becoming a writer or photographer or filmmaker, think about documenting first to ease your way into that process. And lastly, because Skillshare are absolute legends, the first 1,000 of my subscribers to click the top link of the description will be given a one month free trial to Skillshare so you can start exploring your creativity today. I will also put a link to the Nathaniel Drew course that I watch because I think it's fundamental to also evolving this idea as to why you should enjoy and document and continue to create really awesome GoPro photos. This has to be one of my favorite types of photos and I think it's some of the most impressive photos I have ever captured with an action camera. And to be honest with you, underwater photos, I was never really that good at when I first started shooting them. Um, so some tips that I'd recommend uh, to help you to improve your underwater photos is one, to be to become a better diver. That's something that has, you know, and we're not all, can't all like hold our breath for that long. But even if you can improve your free diving just a little bit, then your underwater photos 100% will get better. In terms of the technique, one of the skills that I've learned to develop in creating underwater photos is actually shooting towards the light. Now, that means positioning myself between the subject and the light. And often how I've managed to do this is to free dive down and whether Anna or whoever I'm, diving with positions himself between the light source and me the photographer that's where i've managed to get absolute gold so some tips to take on board to improve your underwater photography is to definitely think about shooting either at sunset or at sunrise when you're getting those really nice light beams really break through the water's surface whenever you see that you know wear goggles whilst you're doing this so you can really analyze the situation underwater technique wise again use burst burst mode is the best way to be able to really find pick the best frame out of an action sequence again i like to do this 10 photos over three seconds shooting raw Two reasons, one, because I want the camera to be able to process those raw images quickly so that we can shoot more photos as opposed to doing them in JPEG and shooting 30 over six. This is perfect for solo travelers. Quite simply, I would use a bite mount and shoot this photo mostly in landscape or I would awkwardly like position the camera in my mouth and get a portrait shot shooting point of view. Now. When you're creating point of view content, I think it's really also important to think about how you can theme or stylize that shot. You know, sometimes the landscape can just be amazing that all you have to do is sit there and put up a peace sign and it looks amazing. Other times we can evolve that point of view to really storytell a little bit, whether that's by holding up a prop or an object to give your viewer more of a, just to give your, your photo more of a story. The next type of photo is to add a person. And so this is for those of you that are traveling together. One of our favorite photos that we recently took in the Maldives was this one with the coconuts. I think what makes this photo really desirable and awesome is not looking at the shot. If you and the subject are both looking away, I think this is a really great way to provide like a wanderlust, dreamy travel image that me as the viewer wants to put myself in. I wanna be sitting by that pool. I want to be with my partner, you know, having that amazing time in that location. Again, you can do this anywhere and you can really experiment and play around with this type of photo, but essentially it's putting the first person and the second person in 
into the photo to capture something amazing. Have as much fun with this as possible. And if you wanna go down that route, you can also do the follow me too. Next up is thinking about point of view style shots, but not as you or someone else, but as an object. Now, often we see these photos where people dig little holes in the beach or put the GoPro in the fridge or put it you know, to provide us the perspective of an object. I think this is a really, really innovative and cool photo. And I challenge you on your next vacation to find something fun, to put your GoPro in and provide that objective POV. Tips for setting up the camera and ways that you can essentially get better content with wildlife is again to use those faster shooting modes. Now, if you really want, you can also explore setting your camera up as a camera trap by downloading GoPro Labs. I will put a link to a tutorial on how to set up GoPro Labs so you can create a camera trap and just set your camera up with a power bank shooting overnight. Now, something that I haven't tested out myself, but if you are interested in exploring that idea, you know, why not give it a go? Idea number nine is night photos and playing around with light. This quite simply is done in photo mode and it's having a longer exposure or opening up the camera shutter for a long period of time. What I would recommend doing for this is using a tripod, setting your camera up on a tripod, it's actually paramount. <laughs> paramount to getting this kind of shot is using a tripod. I would probably recommend maybe using a more sturdy tripod than like the GoPro sort of plastic tripods. Think about getting a torch, you can use your smartphone or you can use like the Zeus light to paint light into the shot. Very fun to play around with and something that I highly recommend exploring and taking on your next vacation. Second last photo idea on the list is the action shot. Now you can do this with any of these photos. It could be a POV, it could be a selfie, it could be a landscape. Now, I, essentially what we're doing is we are just performing an action either in front of the GoPro or whilst holding it. Again, to create these shots, use burst mode, shoot fast and enjoy the moment. Now the last idea that I wanna share with you is high-res screen grabs. This is something that I think a lot of people overlook, but it's something that I always use for creating thumbnails in these YouTube videos. Now, if you're shooting in four or 5K on your action camera, remember you can create high-res screen grabs. In this little table up here, it shows you like all the resolution of image that you can create from your screen grab. And the best way to do this is actually through the GoPro app, not just by using Command Shift 4 on your Mac and clicking and dragging your screen frame size, but actually using the GoPro software Software to create the screen grab. Guys, I hope you have enjoyed this video. Again, a huge thank you and shout out to Skillshare for sponsoring today's video. Do check out that course by Nathaniel Drew. Thank you for sharing the stoke and I will see you guys in the next video. JR, peace. Oh.